In the last video, we talked about the counting principle, which is basically counting how many ways objects can be arranged. In the next two videos, we'll be talking about specific types of arrangements that are often confused. So make sure that you watch these videos as many times as you need to understand the differences between permutations, combinations, and the counting principle. But in this video, we'll be focusing on chapter 11, section 2, over permutations. Now, a permutation is an ordered arrangement of items that occur when each item is used only once and the order makes a difference. And I want to go ahead and, and show you an example before we get to the actual lesson. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and say permutation. And here it says the order makes a difference. So we have to have a perfect order because the order makes a difference. Let's go ahead and pretend that we also have a group of people. We're going to say we have a group of three people. We're going to say John, David, and Mary. Okay. Let's say we're in a club and we have three positions that need to be filled. And these th three people were selected to fill these positions. The positions include president, vice president, and secretary. In this particular case, the order makes a difference. John can be president, while David is the vice president, and Mary is the secretary. This is one specific order. Or we can have John, the president, while Mary is the vice president, and David is the secretary. This order and this order are not the same. They are completely different. So this order is considered a permutation or a perfect order. We could also have it where David is the president, John is the vice president, and Mary is the secretary. David could be president, Mary, Vice President, and John, the Secretary. We could also have the situation where Mary is the President, John is the Vice President, and David is Secretary, or Mary is President, David is Vice President, and John is Secretary. All of these particular combinations are different. Okay. This is what we call a permutation. So let's look at a couple of examples. For number one, it says how many ways can six jokes be delivered? Well, if you remember this particular type of question, you can think about the counting principles that we learned in 11.1, .1, where our first position, we have six types of jokes. Once one joke is used, our second, we only have five options because one has been used. By the time we get to the third joke, we can see that two jokes have been used, leaving only four left. Fourth position, we can see three jokes have been used, leaving three left. Fifth position, we can see four jokes have been used, that means only two are left. And then the last position, well, we've used five jokes out of six. That leaves only one. This is the counting principle that we learned in the last section. Let's go ahead and do this problem using the calculator. Yes, I can multiply each of these together to find it. But any time that you have a situation like this, where you start with a number and you're going down by increments of one, all the way down to one, this is called factorial. You can also write a factorial by using a explanation mark. 
So six explanation mark is what we express here. I can do that in the calculator. If you have a different calculator that's been approved, I may not know where your factorial button is. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first number of your sequence, in this case, 6. So I'm going to write a 6 here, and then I'm going to go to my probability function, which is this button here. You do not have to press the second. The second button will take you from fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. But we just want to use the probability, so that's going to be the PRB. If you notice here, you have NPR and CR, we're going to use this one. When I press enter, you see that I get 720, which is exactly the same number I get if I multiply all of these numbers together. Let's go ahead and try that as well. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 720. You get the same answer. The other one is just a short notation. Now, let's see how this is different when we read the second part. How many ways can six jokes be delivered if five jokes are given by a man and one joke from a book? Given that a man tells a joke first. Well, in this particular case here, we know that the first position has to be from a man's joke. And out of the men's joke, we have five of them. So here our first choice is only going to be five possible jokes. The rest of the positions, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth position of your joke, doesn't really specify if it has to come from a man or from a book. So if you think about one of the man's jokes was taken, we still have four jokes by man and one joke from a book. So altogether, we have five jokes that can be told in the second position. Four from a man or one from the book. Once that joke is told, then we can say there's only four jokes left. The next one, three jokes left. The next position, two jokes left. And of course, when we get to the last position, we should only have one joke left. So in this particular case, it's not exactly the same as we have up here, because we eliminated the book joke first. If you notice here, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, this is what we call factorial, and we can use the factorial to help us solve for this part. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in a 5 first and then put my factorial, which is PRB, and then scroll over twice. And then I'm going to multiply that entire thing by 5, so times 5. Now when I press enter, I can see I have a total of 600 combinations, which is what I have here. Yes, you can also multiply everything together, and that will work as well, but sometimes these numbers get too large, so it's easier to learn how to use the calculator. Let's look at our next example. Problem two. How many ways can you arrange five books on a bookshelf, assuming that order makes a difference? Now we're going to go ahead and list our books, the first position, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and how many options do we have for the first position? Well, here it doesn't specify that there's any requirements. It just says that we have five books. So we're going to start with five, four, three, two, and one. That's the same thing as your five factorial, and then you have 120. I'm going to go ahead and just go up and delete the times five, delete my five factorial, and when I press enter, I have 120 ways that we can arrange these five books. Problem three. Problem three says evaluate without using a calculator. Well, the good news is on your exams, you do get to use a calculator. Sometimes you're not able to solve some of these problems using a calculator. So what I did here was I went ahead and showed you by hand how to do it. Remember the nine factorial means nine times eight times seven, all the way down to times one. So what I did here was to show 
the sequence all the way from 9 down to 1. On this one, it starts with the 6. So if you can see, I went ahead and put 6 times 5 dot 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 all the way down to 1. What this means is everything that I have circled here and here, they essentially cancel out with each other. So I'm left with just 9 times 8 times 7. This is not a factorial since it does not go all the way down to 1. So all I want to do is multiply these three numbers together. Let's go ahead and do that. 9 times 8 times 7. 504. You can do this in the calculator because these numbers are fairly small. So if you don't feel comfortable doing it by hand, you can go ahead and put 9 factorial divided by 6 factorial. And you will get the same answer. Let's look at part B. Part B is the same thing. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and then I start with 11, 10, all the way down to 1. I chose to go to 10 because I can see here that the denominator has 11 first, so I put those underneath and do 10 times all the way down to 1. Everything that I have circled will cancel out with each other, leaving me with just these values to multiply. We'll go ahead and do that now. 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 12. 524,160. Exactly the same thing I have here. I can still do this in the calculator because these numbers are fairly small. Let's go ahead and do that. 16 divided by 11 factorial, and I get 524,160. Let's go ahead and look at the third example. Now here you can see we start with 100 times 99 all the way down to 1. The denominator 99 times all the way down to 1. Everything I have circled cancels each other out, leaving our answer with just 100. Here's the issue with this. If you think about these numbers, 100 times 99 times 98, those numbers are going to get really large. So if I try putting this in the calculator, it's going to give me an overflow error message. So in this particular case, if I try to do this one by the calculator, even though the answer is just 100, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work because it can't do one calculation, it won't be able to do the other either. So knowing how to do it by hand is going to be useful in certain situations like this. The next section here is the actual formula when we do permutations, but we're not using all of our choices. We're just using a specific number of choices. Let's go back to our situation over here where we have three positions, your president, your vice president, and your secretary, and you have three people. We can see that there were six different ways that this can happen. The easy way to do it mathematically is saying we have three choices for president, two choices for vice president, and then one choice for your secretary making it a total of six different combinations. But what happens if we decided to expand our pool of people? Let's say five people we can choose from. Not only John, David, and Mary, but Eric also wants to be in the running for a position, and so does Lisa. Now we have five people and three positions. How many ways can these three positions be filled if we have a pool of five people? That's what this equation does for us. Okay. It's called the permutations when we're not using the entire pool. N here will be the total number of people in the pool. R is how many you're taking out. So if you have a pool of five people, but you're only going to use three people, this is the equation 
that we would use. Let's go ahead and solve this case. So if we have n is equal to 5, and we say r is equal to 3, because we have the three positions, so it will be 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. That's 5 factorial over 2 factorial. Let me do this one by hand. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1. These cancel. So 5 times 4 is 20, and 20 times 3 is 60. So there will be 60 different combinations in this particular case. Here's the good news. The calculator can actually solve these types of problems for you. The main thing is you have to know whether it is going to be a permutation situation or a combination situation. This, in this lesson, we're only discussing the permutation where order matters. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that here. You always start with your n. In this case, I'm going to enter in a 5 because that's what my n is here. Now I'm going to hit that PRB button and notice you have a n PR and n CR. Well, the P in this case stands for permutation. The C over here stands for combination. Knowing which of these that you have to use given the case is going to be up to you. The calculator will perform the calculation, but you have to tell it which one to use. We're going to use permutation because the order matters. I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and then I'm going to push my R, which in this case is 3. When I press enter, you can see that I got 60, which is exactly the same number that I did by hand over here. If you use the wrong information, you're going to get the incorrect answer. In this particular case, if I say 5 choose 3, I only get 10. Okay, That's very different from 60. So what I'm going to suggest you do is learn how to recognize when to use a permutation and when to use a combination. Let's go ahead and look at number four. Here it says, a corporation has seven members on its board of directors. How many ways can it elect a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer? Well, here is very similar to my problem that I did, except now we have seven members and there are four positions. The larger number will always be n. So n is going to be equal to seven and r is going to be equal to four. Since our order matters, we are going to be using permutation. Well, how do we know the order matters? Anytime that you have a position that needs to be filled, order is going to matter. If I said that we had a group of four people being on a team and there were no positions, then order would not matter. So once I decide my n and my r, and if it's combination or permutation, I can plug it into the calculator. We're going to start with the 7, with the larger number always first, and then P or B, permutation, and then 4. 840 ways. Number 5 says, how many different programming schedules can be arranged by choosing five situation comedies from a collection of nine classic sitcoms? In this situation, our order is going to matter, and we will use permutation because we're talking about the lineup of five out of nine sitcoms. So we have nine sitcoms, so our N is going to be nine, and our R is going to be five since we have five comedies. Nine permutation five. I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. Nine PRB permutation 5 will be 15,120 different ways. In this last section, we're talking about permutations when we have duplicate items. Let me go ahead and show you an example using my markers here.
So if I wanted to count the number of orders I could have using these three markers, can we tell the difference between this particular order here and this order here? No, for us, this is exactly the same as the previous order. So if I wanted to count the number of different orders, basically I'm just putting the order of the blue marker. The blue marker can be first, it doesn't matter if the black markers are like this or like this. It's counted as one order. The blue marker could be second. It doesn't matter if the two black markers are like this or like this. The order is identical. This would be two. Or the blue marker can be in the third position, making these two. It really doesn't matter if they're like this or like this because in a sense, it's exactly the same to what? So there's only three different ways that we can arrange these markers if two of them are identical. Let's look at example six. Example six says, in how many ways can Mississippi be arranged? Well, what we're going to do, first of all, is count the number of letters in the word Mississippi. Here we have 11 letters. Now we're going to count how many letters we have of each individual or unique letter. So for M, we only have one letter. The I's, we have four, so the number of I's in Mississippi is four. The S, we have four, so I have the number of S's is going to be four. And the P is two, so here I have two P. Since M is only one, I went ahead and put that here at the end. So all I'm doing is putting the total number at the top, 11 factorial, and in the denominator I'm using the 4, the 4, the 2, and then the 1, which represents the M. All of these numbers here need to add up to the 11 up here. So 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. If you put this in the calculator, make sure to include those parentheses in the denominator you will see that there's 34,650 ways. I'm going to go ahead and do, put, do that for you here. Start with the 11 factorial divided by, and here include those parentheses, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. You don't have to put the 1 because 1 factorial is just 1. But it's a good way to make sure that you've counted all your letters correctly. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And you can see that I have 34,650 ways. For part B, it says how many ways can emosis be arranged? So here, same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 letters. So N is equal to 7. There are two O's. There are three S's. So 2, 3, 1 M and one I. Put this in the calculator, you'll get 420 ways. Okay, that will conclude 11.2. Please let me know if you have any questions.